Hello, welcome to the latest episode in the Opto Innovation Budget EV Mini Conversion Series. Uh, we saw in the last episode we were driving the Mini, which was a massive milestone and an awesome achievement. Everybody's super happy about that. However, we have skipped what was involved from the moment Tom Debris got involved to the actual physical driving of the vehicle. Obviously, it wasn't just a case of here's a control unit, off you go. There was things to consider like the wiring loom, the BMW S-Box conversion, the cooling loop, etc, etc. So we're going to run a few more episodes covering these details and filling in the gaps basically. So this episode we're going to look at the wiring loom um, and how that was created. So Tom provided us with a pinout of all the main components within the system and the basic diagram showing how it would all be laid out. From that we created our own wiring diagram in Excel. Obviously Excel is not the best software for creating wiring diagrams but it is simple straightforward and easy to use and if anyone's got any suggestions about any other better software please comment and we'll quite happily have a look and uh, hopefully learn something because Excel is really not the best to use for it but it's all we had available. So once we had our basic layout diagram we decided that the best way to do this was to create a physical replica of the components distances apart within the Mini, if that makes sense. So we got a big piece of OSB board, printed on pieces of paper the component pinouts and positioned them at the correct lengths that they would be apart from each other via the route of the wiring in the Mini. I don't know if that made sense, that sounded like I just blurbed a bit there, but you know what I mean. Um, once we laid it all out on the board it made it a lot easier to route the wires and see what was going on and make changes if we needed. Uh, so we move on to wires. When you've got as many wires as you do have in a modern day automotive system the colours become confusing to say the least. So we ordered as many colours variants as we could from the we used 12 volt planet for the wires I think it was uh, there'll be a link somewhere or something like that. So when it comes to the wire, most of the stuff was 0.5 mil thick. So we bought as many color variants as we could in that on reels. But then you can obviously buy it by the meter as well for the stuff we're using not as much of. This is one mil thick stuff. And then there's obviously with the red and the black, we use plenty of them in all the sizes. So we've got full reels of them. Obviously it's more cost effective to buy it in full reels, but for one loom, you're probably not going to use huge amounts. Uh, as part of the loom making process we had to make canvas twisted wires connections so we used a drill for that. We're, I would seen it on the internet where you hold one end of the wire and you pop one end of the pair of wires and then you put the other end in a drill and spin it up so it rotates and you get twisted wires but you've got to be careful once you've done that because if you let the tension go they tend to wrap themselves up very quickly and that becomes a ball ache, so just be aware of that one. So the next thing we considered was the connectors for the components. Now some of the Mitsubishi connectors are quite obscure. And in fact, the inverter connector is not currently available to purchase. So Tom had designed a 3D printed housing to use a more standardized connector. And we used that for the inverter. The other connectors we managed to buy Although I would mention that there's minimum order quantities on most of the connectors, which means you end up spending, we end up buying 10 when you only need one, which obviously has a cost implication. Can't be helped, that's, that's how the manufacturers and the suppliers work, so just have to suck that one up. So we also bought a 12 volt fuse box and a 12 volt relay box and a positive buzz bar arrangement. I think these were all from uh, a site called Switch Electronics. Uh, MTA is the manufacturer of the fuse box and the relay box. Now another thing we didn't consider when starting to create the wiring loom was all the different connectors all require different crimps which means you need to buy all the different crimp tool variants in order to be able to create the loom so it's not a case of one set of crimps does every job you have to have specific crimps for specific connectors which incurs more cost. Um, once you've got the set you're alright but if you're only ever making one loom it's a 
another expense to consider. So we went out and purchased the relevant crimping tools. So we've got it all laid out on the board, got the wires on, got the connectors fitted, used a bajillion cable ties, which is probably not very eco-friendly, but it was the simplest way to keep things organized while we were making the loom. And then in order to tidy it up, we got some braided sheath that goes over the wires. Sheath. The <laughs> sheath. Braided sheath that goes over, sorry. I don't know. Braided sheath that goes over the wires and uh, makes it all look tidier, basically. Okay, so when it comes to housing your loom within the vehicle, there's a number of options available. We started with this hard plastic stuff, but it really, it's not the best. Um, we've used this spiral bounding. You can see it just wraps around. That's nice for fitting after the, after you've got the loom in the vehicle, you can just wrap this round afterwards, which is nice. We've got this uh, expanding mesh type, which is, uh, I feel like it's the best quality looking however the problem with this is once you've put it on if you've got a long length you can't access the wires midway down the loom so what we ended up with was using this self wrapping material type which it has a nice quality feel to it and it allows you to access the cables after you've fitted the loom it's a real nice product i mean it's expensive but it makes life a lot easier. That was it basically, that was the loom created. Uh, we used a mock-up of the dashboard to help us put all the switches and controls that were in there. Obviously we've got switches, ports and whatnot. A lot of use of the multimeter to test the connections and make sure everything was correct before we plugged it into any expensive components. And then we laid it all in the vehicle. You've got to consider when you're putting the connectors on that if the loom won't if the connectors won't fit through the hole you've got to get through in your vehicle, for the, in the bulkhead for instance, then you'll have to de-pin it and then re-pin it, which is a interesting task. In the end, the loom worked really well first shot. We were very pleased with how it works. There's a few tweaks to make, but it was actually pretty good. So thank you very much for watching again, it's always appreciated, if you could like, follow, subscribe, that's all massively appreciated, we've got a couple more of these fill in the blank type episodes. We're going to do a big episode of what it's like to live with an EV converted classic vehicle and how it performs in normal day to day tasks, that's coming in a few weeks hopefully, um, so stay tuned for that one, that's it, thanks very much. Cheer out.